If you are interested in learning about careers, but don't always have time, the Interviewing People 10-Minute Highlight Shows are the solution. This week's highlights are from my interview with Alex Kane, who is a software developer, 3D artist, and teacher living in Tokyo, Japan. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the highlights of our conversation. When I left high school, I went to Huntington University and studied digital media animation and got a minor in computer science. It definitely made a difference in my choices. On my sophomore year of university, we had the opportunity to go to Japan for two weeks. And we were going to do some sightseeing and see some animation studios and independent artists. So I jumped on board with that. And first time being out of the country, seeing a new world. And it was very, um, very eye-opening to see how other people live and to step outside your country like that and see another culture. And when I first entered university, the main, the main goal was uh, Pixar. That seems to be everybody's goal, Disney or Pixar, <laughs> yeah. or the, the top ones, DreamWorks and whatnot. And then a lot of us wanted to do independent work because um, there's a lot of indie studios that most people don't even know about. But when you go to college, you get exposed to the industry more and see that there's other studios like in France or other independent artists here and there living all over the world. It's a different side of the industry that you wouldn't know unless you were exposed by professors or artists in the field. But I've always kind of been a self learner, taking it upon myself to like Google or YouTube things and learn outside of class. So I, I still did a lot of the programming in college, um, writing, mainly automating things uh, like tasks tasks that I would do repeatedly that just became tiresome and oh, right. so just figuring out how to automate that kind of stuff so when I graduated yeah I was working in a program called blender it's a free animation suite so I was trying to figure out how to make clothing for a character and how to get it to like um, how to speed up that process because there's so many individual steps involved. So I was like, if there was just a button that could <laughs> do it all, that'd be great. <laughs> so, so I kind of played around a bit and developed what is now called a cloth weaver. And it's a, it's a plugin, it's an add-on for the Blender free program. Um, and it essentially helps you add clothing to characters um, and troubleshoot and test iterations in different settings uh, more quickly than having to do it manually and spending hours. But now there's copies of mine. There's like five different clones that have come out since I've released mine three years ago. The competition. And how does that work? Are, should, should people be paying royalties for that and they don't? Or has your work been recognized by the other people? Apparently one of my uh, previous customers from like the beginning, um, they ended up creating a product very similar to mine. Um, but technically um, I can't do anything because within the Blender software, because it's open source, everyone can see your code. Oh, okay. okay. So I can't really protect my code. I can write up terms of service and uh, legal documentation on my website saying, don't copy this. But there's nothing I can really do to stop a competitor from making a variant of course, they can't copy the exact thing, but if they 
have something, a program that's very similar, is technically okay. So there's like two sides of it. I have the 3D artist side, freelancing side. And essentially that's just taking on various jobs from different companies and creating um, whatever they need done. For example, go to a job board website. Hey, we're looking for an artist who can create a, a character of, that looks like a Disney character and we want it to move a certain way and then send them an email. Hey, I can do this, here's my portfolio. So what I'd usually do is write up a contract or they would send me a contract. We would agree to you know, the terms. Um, usually, yeah, they would invoice me, send me a, uh, like a down payment first. And then when I send them the finished product after uh, collaboration, then receive the final payment. That's how that would go on that side. Um, right. For the software side, it's been a lot easier. So on the one on the one side, you're uh, you're self-employed here with the three D artistry, and on the other side with the the software, you're more of like business business side. So um, you write your code once, you update it, you maintain it, and then just wait for sales to come in. Essentially, so I've been trying to boost this side because it's been more successful. The clients taking on clients. That's um haven't had too many or haven't had the need to because the software side has been more successful. And the software side, I ended up creating an LLC for it. So my own company for it to sell okay. the software under that. So that way it has different advantages from a legal standpoint, you're protected if someone wants to attack you. So your personal assets are protected. From a tax advantage, you can take business deductions. So okay. if I need to buy a new desktop computer, I can write that off. If you want to work at a studio and be specialized in like a certain field. For example, let's say you want to uh, do hair or fur or clothing or fluid simulations or animation or texturing. If you want to be more specific, then I mean, you could go to a university. Um, an art school would probably be best. Liberal arts is so-so, at least in the... Uh, graphic design field, I found, they don't care about your credentials, they care about what your portfolio contains. So as long as you have the drive and the experience on your portfolio, either working for either freelancing or just having a, an abundance of artwork to show a potential employer or client, that's all they care about. For a freelancer, because we're kind of a jack of all trades, as a freelancer, you could get many demands from a client or a small studio, and you have to do a, you have to wear many different hats. You have to do a lot of different tasks. So, in that case, um, it's good to be a generalist to know a bit of everything, which is more so what I am, and that doesn't really require a degree. Um, none of my clients have cared; they just want to see the portfolio. Don't worry so much. <laughs> That's one thing. <laughs> uh, don't worry about future or little small things. In terms of career, oh, that was another thing. For like a career path, if you could find a mentor, find, at least on the artist side, find a, like a leader or someone in the industry and shadow them and get feedback from them directly. That would be way more beneficial than like a class of 50 people and you know you have a professor running around trying to help everybody it would be easier to have that one-on-one -on -one direct feedback um, if you can find that so i would i would go a route of um, apprenticeship i would say thank you for watching this episode showing highlights of the latest interviewing people career cast with alex king and to make your Mondays the best they can be, subscribe so you can hear more career stories every week. Thank you for watching, and as always, remember the best part about Mondays is interviewing people.